how's it going? Today we are in the kitchen hiding from the heat and I am going to do a four week review on our Kuyo grow system. So we planted this up together about four weeks ago. Um, I unboxed this system. It is the Kuyo system. Um, and if you guys missed that video, I will put a link in the description below that you guys can go and watch that and see um, the unboxing and how to set it up and all that kind of stuff. But today I'm going to give you an update on how everything is doing. So in that video, I showed you putting it together, how everything worked, and then I planted some basil seeds and some spinach seeds. And um, I'm gonna give you guys an update, see how everything's doing. Um, as you guys can kind of see, this is basil right here. The basil is doing awesome, um, which I'm super psyched about. And I'm actually going to turn the system off right now so you guys can see a little bit better detail. Okay, so now I have the system turned off so we can see in detail a little bit better without the harsh light. And I want you guys to take a look here. This is our basil. It's doing amazing. I have harvested off of this quite a few times actually. Um, so this would be much bigger if I let it go, but I have been harvesting off of it. I've just been coming in and pinching the top off of it and um, eating it. It's been great. It tastes wonderful, it's delicious. Now over here on this side, right here, we planted in this one, one, two, and three, we planted spinach and the spinach did not do well. Um, so you guys can see this little plant right here. This is our spinach plant. As you can see, he's kind of yellow and not looking so good. Um, actually, let me just pull him out so you guys can get a better look at him. This is my only spinach plant that came up and that is what it did. Isn't that terrible? This is actually my third time trying to plant spinach in one of these hydroponic indoor systems. And I'm thinking spinach is just not conducive to these. If you guys have grown spinach in these successfully, please let me know. And if you've done any tips or anything, um, help me out because it's not working. I'm starting to wonder if it's just too much water for spinach. Some um, crops and things like that just do not like water. Like they don't like an excessive amount of water. They like to dry out a little bit between waterings. And I'm wondering if spinach is one of those. Um, because like I said, I only had one plant, one seed germinate out of the six or seven that I planted in these three holes. Um, so oh, as you can see, nothing came up in that one. I'm actually starting to have a little bit of algae growing around the edge because nothing is happening in there and that will happen. This one, the third one, nothing, nothing happening. So the spinach was a fail. Um, I don't know if it's user error on my part. Again, I don't know if spinach maybe doesn't like these types of systems, doesn't like that much water, um, but the basil is doing great. Um, and so I wanted to talk about a few options with you guys of what you can do with your systems and the different things that you can do with your hydroponic indoor grow systems. So the first thing, and most of these things I'm going to talk about were questions that were asked that I noticed in the comments and things like that. So I wanted to address them in a video and make it really simple and just one time address things. So people kind of have one place for some answers. So the first thing that I see a lot of times is people asking if they can put plants already grown plants into these systems. And I would say no. Um, whenever you are setting this system up, you have these tiny little um, sponges that you're putting seeds into to grow the seeds. Um, and it would be difficult to say the least to try to get a already started plant into a system like this, not to mention the fact that it would be messy and pretty much impossible. Um, so I would say don't do that. The second reason that I would say don't do that besides all the messiness and impossibilities is that seed starting in these systems is so easy. It is really, really simple to get things started in here. Now, aside from my spinach, which we talked about a second ago, um, I have sprouted quite a few things in these tomato plants, um, basil, lettuce, all kinds of things like that. I have started in systems like that and I have 
transplanted them out into my garden. Um, because this system is set up and perfectly designed to start seeds and get them going and really build an awesome root system, this thing is incredible for seed starting. So it's actually easier to start your seeds in here than trying to transplant plants into this thing. Um, if you want to just leave your plants in here, you can. Um, I saw a lot of people asking questions like it's time to get those out, whatever. When are you going to be harvesting that? And you do get to a point where you want to pull things out and start something new in here. It does kind of get to that point. But for the most part, you can leave this in here as long as you would like and harvest off of it, whatever it is. Um, enjoy its beauty or whatever if, you're, if it's not something to eat. Um, so that's something that you can do. You can leave it in here and just keep harvesting off of it or enjoying its beauty until you're finished with it and you can take it out and replace it with something new. Now you can also, like I referred to earlier, take these out and use them as starts out in your garden. So I did this with some tomato plants that I planted this year and they're doing fantastic. Um, I just started my seeds in here and then I took them out. So you just pull these out of your system. Look at those roots. Isn't that incredible? These hydroponic systems amaze me every time I pull the roots out. Um, so you're just gonna pull this little guy out and then he's in a basket. And I've seen some people saying that they're cutting the baskets apart. That's really not necessary. I know you see this giant mass of roots and you're like, I don't wanna hurt the roots or anything. Honestly, this plant has such a good root system. We will lose a few, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. You want to just gently coax the basket off the bottom of this plant. And there you go. Then you can just stick this right into your garden. And I'm going to be doing that with this one and of course a few others. I'm going to leave a couple basil plants in here because I want some right at my fingertips, but I also want to plant some out in the garden. So you would just take this out and plant it like normal. And it really makes it simple. This was four weeks to have this root system and these plants. And you can see right here, if I open this up, you can see right there where that thing is right there. I hope you guys can see that where that notch is. That's where I've already harvested off that plant at least once. So this plant would be a lot bigger if you weren't harvesting off of it. Um, one thing about basil is if you do harvest off of it, it'll get bushier. So this plant right here has not been harvested off of this stem right here. And so he's just one stem and he's kind of lanky. If I were to come in and pinch him back, then he would get bushy and bigger like this guy and look really nice. So I will be doing that as I'm planting them out too. I'll be pinching them back a little bit just to uh, encourage growth and uh, encourage it to be a stronger plant. So um, that's that. Set him to the side for now. So yeah, my overall thoughts on the QYO hydroponic system, I am very happy with it. Um, I really like this system. There's a few features of the system that I find really convenient, such as this guy over here. This is the water marker. So that or water indicator, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, but it indicates how high your water level is inside your system. And that is something that is extremely important in using hydroponic systems over the last few months. I have noticed that it is incredibly important to keep your water levels consistent. Um, if you do not keep your water levels consistent at the high at the, the max spill line, you can get a lot of issues that start to pop up um, like a lot of mold, a lot of um, algae and fungus and things like that. Kind of the fluctuating water on your sponges can breed some issues, which actually I'm going to create a full like troubleshooting video on hydroponic systems because I know that can be a big issue. Um, I've had a lot of questions on what do I do? I'm having algae grow, I'm having mold and fungus and all this kind of stuff happen. And it has happened to me too. It is an issue. And I have been trialing, trial and airing some things. 
and um, I think I've come up with some solutions for you guys, at least things to try. And so I will be addressing some of those things in a video coming up shortly. But for today, I will say that uh, this indicator over here is really nice because it helps you to eliminate some of those problems because you know exactly where the water line is all the time. Um, and that helps you to keep it nice and full. Yeah, so that's my overall thoughts on the Kiyo. I really like it. It's a really nice little system that tucks into anywhere. Um, it works really well. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Um, I'm very happy with it. So yeah, if you guys would like to uh, see more about this unit, see how it works and how it's put together, I will link that video in the description below. And also, I have a link to this particular system if you guys are interested in purchasing it with the coupon code um, that is a limited time. So if you guys would like to learn more about it, check out the description below. Thank you.